Protesters around the world have taken to the streets to call out police brutality and the systemic racism against black people. My sign says white silence equals white violence and I want everybody to recognize that because white people are the people oppressing black people. Welcome back everyone. As you may have noticed, I am working on a new set, but it's not quite ready yet. Hopefully it'll be ready in the next week or so as I'm learning how to use all my new equipment. And by the way, thanks to all my Patreon and Subscribestar subscribers, as well as all my donators. I really appreciate it. Now back to something infinitely more stressful. I don't know about all of you, but I just about had my fill of Orwellian doublespeak and leftist propaganda that's 180 degrees away from reality. As usual, I have to give a disclaimer that what I'm about to to say is not an attack on black Americans or a deflection from police brutality, but rather an attempt to add some truth and context where it's currently being buried by political powers with an agenda. Now with all that out of the way, let's discuss some of these dubious claims being made by dubious people in a one way conversation being forced on us by phony news media. My sign says white silence equals white violence and I want everybody to recognize that because White people are the people oppressing black people. By what measure? Where's your evidence? One of the first things I learned as a kid was that you treat people like you want to be treated and I've always lived by that. Another thing that I learned is that when you broadly generalize a whole group of people based on nothing but their skin color, that's bad and racist. But for some odd reason, that's the order of the day when we're dealing with virus infected subhuman whites. It's quite telling that this white girl who is broadly generalizing people that look just like her as monsters, of course giving herself a pass without a single shred of evidence to back it up. And you know what? I kind of understand it because as white people, I think most of us know that we're raised to feel feel guilty about being white from the moment we get to kindergarten to the moment we graduate from college. Yes, black people have been mistreated in this country going back hundreds of years. And yes, there are still people who mistreat black people, but are we gonna pretend like this is super common in the year 2020? We're a country of 328 million people. You would think if it was that widespread, we'd see a lot more examples of it. I'll tell you one thing I know for sure, fake hate crimes wouldn't be all the rage if real racism was so easy to to find. Yeah, the media can serve up rare examples when they need to push an agenda, but they also ignore any examples of racism that might call into question their racism theory. For example, in 2016, Tony Timpa died in almost the exact same way as George Floyd did. You can watch the video in the sources link, but needless to say, it's just as horrible and brutal as the video of Floyd's apparent murder. But the media didn't cover that like they're covering Floyd now, did they? And that's part of the problem. The media presents this lopsided picture because they only report stories that line up with their narrative. Looking at the data, far more whites are shot by cops than black people. Yes, per capita black men are disproportionately shot by police. However, black men also commit more violent crime and murder. I'm not giving excuses here, but maybe that's a piece of the puzzle to why all of this is happening. But no, again, the media just ignores that because it's inconvenient to the narrative that they're pushing, and that's that black people are being hunted by white people. Another fact that self-hating whites like this girl ignore is that per capita, there's actually more black on white violence than the other way around. Another part of this perplexing claim that whites are some kind of a threat to black people is the fact that black people kill black people 90% of the time, whereas white people kill each other about 82.4% of the time. So based on that stat alone, it shows that black people are far more likely to be killed by other black people than white people. I think that most journalists, if you confronted them on this question, would tell you that they don't report on black on white violence stories because they don't want to create negative backlash on the black community. However, that does beg the question, does the media want a negative backlash on the white community? Author and educator Educator Tim Wise says it's not fear that drives people to conflate blackness with crime, but power and a disregard for some people of color. What the hell? Again, that's quite a judgment to be making about 245 million people. Especially when, like I just talked about, the crime statistics are very clear. I really don't believe that most white people see a black person and instantly think they're a criminal out of hand. Perhaps some people think that, but maybe that's just because they encounter more crime involving a black perpetrator. I just, I have a real problem with making this broad judgment about 245 million people. You have no idea what's in their hearts and minds. 
you're just making a judgment based on their skin color, which is ironic. You've got to be pretty messed up in the head to actually hold contempt for the lives of people simply because they have a different skin color from you. Sure, there's probably some people that are like that, but they have really messed up brains and the vast majority of people are not like that. American history is one in which white Americans, uh, by and large, have been taught to have indifference or even contempt for black life. We have defined the country as a white nation where people of color are here on a guest pass. I wanna just point out that at no point during these CBS segments or any of these media segments, do they ever bring on a dissenting point of view. It's just a conga line of far left extremists and communists spouting a bunch of Marxist rhetoric. I mean, really, just imagine we were talking about any other group of people in this way. Imagine they were talking about Jewish people. Then the things they were saying would take on a whole new meaning. And the suggestion that America is white only with a guest pass for everybody who's not white is completely absurd. For such a large group of people who hate all people of color, Asians sure are doing pretty well in America. Quite a bit better than white Americans, in fact. Look at this study done showing college graduates by race. Asians soar above all, but it's framed as whites doing better than blacks. Yeah, well, so are Asians, and blacks are doing better than the Hispanics. If we were a white supremacist country, something tells me that wouldn't be happening. But then again, maybe we just really suck at white supremacy. Racism in America, you said, is like dust in the air. Explain what you mean by that. Uh, well, it's just like, if you, if you, have you ever been in a room uh, and there's something, you, you feel a little something itching in your nose? I'm not following. Racism is like that. It's, it's ingrained in our society. What the hell is he talking about? He's rich. He's famous. He's got quite a bit more power and privilege than the average white American. Same goes for Gail King here, who uses her power to manipulate the country into accepting her political party's agenda. These two rich, privileged Americans who are living the American dream are demonizing 75% of the country as inherently evil monsters. Now that I'm thinking about it, that weird analogy he gave is starting to make more sense to me. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.